Hi, I'm Professor Tom Ellis, and my team and I work in synthetic biology. It's a topic about learning how to do coding, but doing that coding in DNA and inside cells. If we think back, the 20th century began with the discovery of the electron, and this was developed and built over the 100 years of the last century, until we ended that century, being able to code computers to do tasks and computation, communicate via the internet, and do video conferencing by mobile phones. That was achieved last century. This coming century, the one we're in now, is going to be the century of engineering biology. At the beginning of the century, we worked out the DNA sequence of the human genome in the year 2000. And now we've got to the point where bioengineers are designing, writing and building chromosomes and genomes to get cells to work as advanced technology. We are literally programming biology by writing code in DNA. So you can imagine if we can code in DNA now, what are we going to achieve by the end of this century, the century of engineering biology? The research to code DNA is called synthetic biology, and it comprises the thinking from engineering and coding uh, from computation, and mixes that with lab work and skills from molecular biology and biotechnology, things like cloning, DNA modification, CRISPR, PCR. We design and assemble together thousands of bases of DNA code in the lab, uh, and then these are then added into cells like biological programs. And we use cells like E. coli and baker's yeast and other microbes, to, and these programs are designed to change their behavior, get them to do new useful tasks. Our lab, for example, has made yeast, make antibiotics, and have programmed cells to detect things like hormones in water and change color in response. We are now even making bacteria produce high-performance materials by getting them to grow polymers like nanocellulose from sugar. And in that work, we've even worked with designers who can use synthetic biology to make consumer items. For example, our engineered cells that make this cellulose material grew the material for a shoe, and it had a DNA program in the cells that specified and made the color that the shoe was then produced in. All done with DNA coding. Our research to use DNA programming to make materials was actually started by undergraduate students at Imperial who worked as a team over summer in an international competition in synthetic biology called iGEM. Their project was a great success, not only in their education, but also in research. They even formed a bioengineering startup company from their work and are now using this kind of technology to combat pollution. A big part of synthetic biology at Imperial is teaching. We want to train a generation of bioengineers to be experts in coding in DNA so that they can program biology to work for us and with us over the course of this century to help solve global challenges like pollution, healthcare and more. Hands-on teaching of synthetic biology is given in the third and fourth years of the undergraduate degree. This is where our students bring together all the concepts they've learned in molecular biosciences, in coding, in electronic logic and mathematical modeling of biological systems. Synthesize that all together and be able to become a synthetic biologist, designing and making their own DNA programs to instruct cells to perform new tasks. Imperial has the biggest cluster of synthetic biology research groups in Europe. The bioengineering department has been at the forefront of research and teaching in this field in the UK for well over a decade. We've developed technologies, realized applications, generated startup companies and pushed the boundaries of what is possible for programming cells. So if you're interested in the future of bioengineering, then learn to code in DNA with synthetic biology and we can help engineer biology to work with us this century.